Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Eastern and uh, I hope you're all keeping safe and well and uh, welcome to another episode of uh, the build and this time we're going to concentrate on the station yep we're back on South Seal Station we're actually going to do some work to it so um, without uh, further ado we'll, we'll, hold on a minute what's going on here Where's all the kids on the floor? I wonder why. It's probably because in the last video I picked the teacher up and measured him, and the kids are having a joke about it. <laughs> probably, I don't know. Uh, just making up funny stories as I go along. Right, so on the serious note, there's something missing off the front of this station, and uh, that's what we're going to be looking into. So this side of the station was never ever truly finished. Um, the last job I did on this side was the canopy just there. And uh, this canopy got missed. Because I wanted to get on with the buildings on platform too. So, uh, referring back to this old photograph of the 1920s and as you can see there's a canopy just above the doors and windows and below the rose window which sits just in this space here so what I'm going to do now is do a few measurements and knock up a drawing and uh, see what's in the way of putting the canopy together and um, we have another photograph here which I used for the sweep shot and if we zoom in closely you can see it's made of glass and we have a apex on the left and in the other photograph you can clearly see that there's an apex on the right as well So it's going to be an interesting build this, to try and recreate that. So, without further ado, I shall start by measuring up what I've got here um, in the way of distance between the main entrance door and the rose window, because there's not a lot of distance there. So I'll have to see what I can come up with. One of the main problems I've got is when you put the rule square into this corner, so it's touching both walls in that corner, you follow the edge of the rule along and it comes away from the wall. Now if you've been following the series, the actual station building follows the curve of the platform. Hence why we have a whopping, well it looks like to be 12mm gap at that end and it touches there which is at the centre of that rose window there so we have a radius in that building so I've got to make it so it's flexible enough to go around that corner as it were even though it don't look like a corner but if I put the camera there even there you can just probably just about make it out maybe that there is a radius in that building so that's going to be interesting so here we have a very basic drawing yet again it gives me the overall length of the canopy which is 281 it gives me the depth from front to back which is roughly about 30 mils um, we've got a height here of 20 mil and the apexes here are 52 mil. So basically, <clears throat> to make this, I need to make these apexes up first, along with that fascia, um, along with at least half a dozen of these frameworks to go in between here. But I'm not sure of that height 
at the moment because in the photograph this section here is lower than these two apexes um, yeah they are it is, it is lower so that must come down a little bit and then go across but uh, I'd like to make it all one height just to make it a li little bit easier if it was done that way so maybe I can make them 20 mil as well so let's just see how I get on so I'm making a little bit of a start um, I'm using 1.5 square rod to make up the main frame and everything else will be one mil square rod and the the, the the glass strips will probably be 0 0.2 by 75 mil strip so as you can see this is the front fascia and I'm in the process of making some of these right angle brackets which will be glued onto the back side of the front fascia um, in the drawing here I've made up some um, dimensions where these brackets are going to go uh, to support the main roof. So it's 52 million, 50 million, 45, 48 and 50. So I can miss all the doors and windows so the frames, supporting frames will be in between each of the doors and windows so I won't have any clashes on the building so he says. So I shall carry on and do a bit more. So it's important that I get these right angle brackets square and flush. So I'm just using a rural corner as a guide. And we'll just leave that to dry. And let's just check this one. Yeah. So just basically a little dab of glue on there. So the next thing is, now that these brackets are slowly drying out, um, the next thing is, is to lie a rule across from this corner to the back corner and then cut off that angle. A little bit of angle there, just cut that off. That's just for the slope and then we glue in one of these to go in between the two ends to make one of those but at the same time as gluing in this bar you still got to make sure that it's square and the slope is good So that's another one done. So we finished our brackets. Uh, in the end, I've reduced them um, to 18 mil on this length instead of 20, um, because there is a clash on the building. Because I've, I've, I've done a pre, uh, another pre measurement, and there is a clash on the build. So we're concentrating on the main apexes now. Um, as you can see, I've already cut this one down to that's 16 mil now, that upright. As you can see, there's a little chamfer on both sides. So what I'm doing now is I'm lying this across there onto my mark, which I marked there, and finding the center line on the pivot on the top of there and just cutting it. So And then once I've cut one, I'll cut the other one the same because I'll use this one as a template. So you're getting the gist of what it may look like once it's finished. Yeah, as you can see I've added the apexes now and they're finished. It's just a case of putting the rest of the frame together. So as you can see I've uh, tied in the back um, by just bracing it. 
and this is going to be our gluing points when we come to glue it onto the building. Um, so the next thing to do is all these right angle brackets are made. We can glue these where they miss the doors and windows. And then we'll be able to tie in the back here. And that should stiffen it up a little bit. But as you can see, we've got a natural curve in the structure already. So I'm hoping it'll be enough to match the building. But uh, we shall see. So as you can see, I have now finished the main framework. And if you look at it that way on, it is bent and it's kept the shape of the bend and it matches the building and basically what I did was this straight here and it just starts to bend from here onwards but it still measures the same front and back which is good um, so with that in mind it's almost ready to paint um, I'm going to paint the whole frame red except for these bits here the two apexes. I'm going to paint them white and there's some flashing I'm going to put along this edge which will also be white which will run along that edge half and half on and off the center of that 1.5 um, edge along there and down this side. So I think once that's painted it'll look uh, quite good so what I'll do is I'll not paint these because I'll be gluing the glazing onto them but once the glazing's in I can then add this over the top which will then be painted so the reason why we're discussing the possibilities of glass and asphalt is if I put any LEDs into this you're going to see the cables that is for sure um, because I'd like to have at least two LEDs lighting up this canopy one here and one here so the only way I can see round it looking at it again is we have two crossbars here on the back. I can glue a little bit of plastic onto them with three mil holes and have the LEDs here and here. And then this side I can run the cables as high up as I can. Bearing in mind we have an apex going this way and that way so that's going to be a crevice in there so the cables will have to run high up as it can underneath this framework and then back out this corner here so that might be the cunning plan how I'm going to get in there to do the soldering I do not know but I do like a challenge. So as you can see I've made a start on painting this delicate framework. Um, as you can see I'm painting it in the crimson red but I'm leaving the areas where the glass is going to go on white so as I want to stick the glass down to the bare plastic um, as it were um, yeah it's a bit uh, fiddly this job you notice I've got the uh, photograph at hand all the time just to um, make sure I'm painting this in the right places especially um, this one because you can see you have two different colours around the apex and because of that I have added an extra strip of plastic card, some very fine plastic card right across the top so on my final coat once all the roofs in I can um, define it with a red 
um, paint once I've painted the white windows. So while we're waiting for the paint to dry on that framework on the canopy, we just thought we'd come back to this back scene because uh, we really didn't uh, finish it off. Now, as you can see, there's a telephone pole here blocking the door. So I've just got to paint that out. So I'm just giving the door a different colour just so we can black out that telegraph pole. I've done, done half of it there. So to black out the other half, of the telegraph pole. I'm just putting in various few different coloured dots to try and put the bricks back using various colours. Try and match the colours that are there. I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow now, just to see if it'll lighten it up because it's a bit too dark. It's slowly disappearing. Yeah, I'm happy with it. So as you can see, over here we've got two shops the same. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to white out the one on the left. And then give it a different name. And the final little detail to raise is this little lad's head as he's playing football. So we'll just uh, remove that. And may I add a little suggestion? Just a little lamppost, just round about here. Just perfect. Right, as you can see, I have added uh, a bracket with an LED in each one of the two apexes. Um, there's no resistors 
in there at the moment because the resistors are going to go into the um, goods office because there's more room to put the resistors uh, in the roof of that building um, and I've also tied the cables back in between the two main supports there just to keep them out of the way and hopefully when that's on the building we shouldn't notice those cables too much if we do then I'll just have to paint them up um, right so the type of roof I want I'd like to have a glass roof um, because then you can look through there um, and see the building through the roof um, I think maybe that's what it was originally but uh, as you saw in the photographs it's very hard to tell um, obviously on this end here I would have to put a blanking piece there we'll have two windows and a blanking piece and if I do the same at this end then it'll look uniformed so I might do that so the next thing to do now is to paint these tabs up red and to paint these apexes white and then I can fit the glass into these and then we can look at putting the glass onto the main roofs as we go but um, we might have to glue this to the building in order to ensure that I get the correct shape because this still flexes quite a bit I've tried it on the building and it does flex to the building but if I put a roof on there and it stiffens, stiffens the um, frame up then it won't flex to match the building if that makes sense so we have a little bit of time to kill while I went for the white gloss to dry so I thought we'd have a little quick job on making some giant advertising signs now back in the 50s and 60s maybe right up to the 70s I used to get these on roadsides and line sides and I think you still get them now on trailers mainly but yeah so these are from Kingsway and you get two sheets for about 4 99 along with two pieces of card so I've just done a little area on the layout and um, I'm going to I'm going to pick out a couple and here are the instructions you get with the 1950s um, adverts um, as you can see you can put them on the sides of buildings underneath railway bridges and um, places like that and here are the instructions here so what I'm planning to do here is copy what they've got here so I've already cut me two posters out my round trees and my milk chocolate muncho mellows and I've marked the center of the card and obviously the black card I want to keep to the back because you'll see this it's not going to go up against the building you'll, you'll see later on so what I'm doing I've found the center and I've marked the center line on and what I've got here is a paint pen just an ordinary black paint pen don't matter if I get a little dab on there and basically what I'm going to do I'm just going to go around the edges because I've left a little bit more than allowed for the posters not a lot, just a couple of millimetres so what we'll do then because there's two posters we need a black line in the middle so I've already marked the centre I'll just make sure I've got enough black in the middle which will hide the card so I'm giving it a good 
Do I have a six millimeter off the center line? Now the good thing about this paint pen dries ever so quick. Right, so now we're ready. So as you can see, once that goes on there, it just shows a little bit of black. Not a lot, just a tiny amount. So, I shall glue these on now. So, as it's paper, uh, I don't want to use PVA glue. So I'm just using this Pritt stick glue. Now I have noticed that these posters come out at different sizes. should have something like this. Now on the back I have marked two 8mm lines in from the edge and I have cut the tips off of these toothpicks. So the next thing I'm going to do is just super glue these on roughly about 5mm down from the top. So we'll just mark 5mm there and there. Just put some super glue along this edge. And using that line as a guide. Right, so now we'll just paint them, might even use the black marker once the uh, glue goes off, and then we'll see it on the layout. Now I bet you're wondering where it's going to go, well we shall see. The paint has dried overnight and um, as you can see I've made a, a good start on the glaze. And this was just a quite easy uh, square piece to fit but the the um, triangle if you like inside there was a little bit more trickier um, we had to measure the width cut a strip at 20 mil and then notch out for the frame on the top there and square up both ends because the outside dimension is 4 mil shorter than the inside dimension so anyway that that fits now and uh, like I said we've glued both ends with the glaze and now this end and the apexes um, when I made the template up for this one it happened to fit perfectly with the other one so I was only had to measure one which was uh, quite lucky now the problem I've got now is because this is a curved structure it's, it's hard to see on the camera there it is but it's not fully curved yet there's still a bit more flex in it um, we measured the building earlier and it's 10 mil uh, out at one end so I've made this um, plastic sheeting 10 mil out at one end so it's basically a curve as you can see so what I'm having to do now is I'm going to finish off both ends and then I'm going to have to glue this to the building and then check this correctly before gluing this 
onto the frame. Um, it's a bit different from how I've done it before because before it was card and it didn't matter so much but with glazing it's got to be uh, pretty good it's got to be uh, almost spot on uh, there's no room for error uh, in the end I didn't have to glue it to the building um, because what I've done is I temporarily stuck the glass onto here and tried it against the building and it's the shape has worked out perfectly so now I can fit out the rest of the glass I've already put the glazing in there and uh, I'll do the same here as well I've already cut the piece ready to go in which is that way so I shall glue that in there and then put all the window frames on like we have here just by using plastic strip uh, two 5mm strips going down there and across the top some 3mm down the side and just some uh, 0.75 for the window frames and I'm going to keep that pattern throughout here just to try and hide the cables that uh, run underneath for the early days so as you can see we've moved on a little bit um, these windows here are complete as you can see front and the two top sides um, what I'm doing now is I'm adding the ribs which hide all the framework underneath so what I'm doing is I'm using some 3 mil strip by 0.25 to go down across there and then another strip on top of it to create a, a rib look if you can see with this one here you just about make it out we probably make it out a bit better once it's painted as you can see there's there's two pieces of plastic strip on there and once that's done it's just a case of adding the windows like we have here all the way across the front and then painting it um, using two types of glue here I'm using the contact adhesive for the plastics here and I'm using glue and glaze for this bit just so we can get a little bit of strength on there so like I says I'm using the contact adhesive for, for the top half across them too and a little bit of glue and glaze just a tiny amount just to run down the center of that beam and just place our strip on and then we repeat the whole process for the narrow piece but that'll just be uh, the contact adhesive on its own Let's make sure it's in the middle. Right, so we moved on quite a bit now and it's it's finished. Um, all I have to do now is just stick it onto the building but before I do we just have to quick look over this um, canopy. Um, as you can see um, I've mixed a little bit of dark green and black matte both of these are mattes and I've ended up with this colour here it's hard to see on the camera but it, it's not black it's a really it's a transition between the two it's 50-50 in, uh, in paint wise mixing it up and it looks quite quite good it looks it looks like it's old and weathered but uh, it's but it's not weathered yet but uh, there we go and that's what it looks like at the front um, so I've kept these window frames white like it is in the photograph um, the only thing 
is a little bit different from the photograph is I've painted this red all the way along here crimson red rather than white um, although there is two um, two partitions of plastic strip in there it would have been a nightmare to try and get in there and paint that white and uh, leave the top red but uh, now I quite like the way that that's turned out Right, so here we are, we're, we're back at the station and uh, I've just finished putting in the lighting um, for the e canopy and uh, there it is there, so it's there. So the rest resistors are here rather than in the canopy itself over there. Um, I did have a question about um, what supply I use for the lighting. Um, well, basically, it's a basic 12 volt um, LED lighting pack you can get anywhere, and basically, I've just used that transformer to put the power supply into the station here, and all these wires go off to various rooms of the station. And um, here we have the canopy. Now, <laughs> I've always known this station without a canopy from the 1980s onwards. And I'll tell you what, it looks, well, not too bad actually. Um, come down to ground level. Um, yeah. It's, it's weird seeing it on there because um, I've never seen the front of South Shield Station with this canopy on. I like to think that after the war the County Council got together with the railway and put the canopy back on along with the clock tower. They somehow found the money and, and did it back to what it was before pre-war but uh, that's just me and it has added somewhat uh, of a characteristic to the front of the station yes it, uh, it will need some extra work at some point um, the the window frames here are way too bright so they need dulling down a bit maybe um, a little bit of weathering um, there is some streaks on the glazing which I think adds character to it because it looks like it's rained recently and it's left a lot of streaks on the windows but uh, they will need weathering as well at some point but uh, on the whole it's not a bad fit this week Right, so what did I do with them advertising signs? Looks like the council have been out already and started putting some flowers in the flower beds along the road. Oh, that's what I've done with it. I put it on this little bit of uh, barren land. All it needs is an old bicycle and some prams right around the back of the uh, advertising signs right so next week we will be concentrating on the big oval roof starting with the two fascia frames so that will be next week so that's all from me now enjoy your hobby I'll see you again next time bye for now bye